Hi everyone, Miss Nitty Cat here, and in this video, I'm actually going to show you how to crochet uh, a basket weave stitch and how to use that stitch to make this um, hot pad or I guess dishcloth. It's really not a, a complicated stitch. I would put this at a, a intermediate beginner level. So if you've no crochet, you know how to do simple crochet, then you can certainly tackle this project. And I think it makes for a great weekend project because these these crochet up fairly quickly. And I think it's a great gift idea for somebody um, to, to make a couple of these, make a pair of these and, and give them to somebody or just use them for yourself. Now I've made three samples here. Um, two of them are with solid colors. I used um, these Lily Sugar and Cream yarn. You really need one, one um, skein of yarn to make, to make one of these. In fact, I have this much left over. So you could potentially make two, might be enough to make two, one yarn. Uh, one skein rather, but maybe not quite. So I would say you need at least one of these, which is about uh, 2.5 ounces, so about 70, 71 grams. Um, again, no product placement here. Just wanted to show you the exact yarn that I'm that I use for these, and they're just 100% cotton four ply yarn. And for the the crochet hook, I used a size H, um, which is a five millimeter hook. You could use maybe one size smaller, or one size bigger, again, depending on, on the yarn that you use. But for this type of yarn, this size H hook works great. And you're gonna need a pair of scissors and a tape measure or a ruler for this project. Now this stitch is certainly not limited to just a dishcloth. You can use this, if you were to use this with, with a, a wool yarn or acrylic yarn, and you wanna actually just crochet up a blanket using this stitch, you can certainly do that. Um, this stitch also works great to make little pockets if you want to, you know, sew them onto, onto sweaters or something like that. I think it, it looks really great. And there's a basket weave stitch in knitting as well. I don't think I've done a video on that, but, but maybe I will in the future. So this one here is with crochet though, and I think it gives a similar effect as you can see. Uh, I think the, the, the basket effect comes out nicer in a solid color than it does in a, in a variegated color, so, but I just wanted to try this out. I really like this, this color combo of um, yellow, orange, and white, and I had one of these, these cones um, that I bought a long time ago, so I thought I'll make one. I'll make one with that as well. I've provided all the pattern details uh, for the stitch as well as for the, the making the project, and so it's, it's in the description field if you click on the little arrow and I'm going to use this blue yarn here to to demonstrate this. Now for the actual project the initial uh, cast on is 30 chains or you're going to make 30 chains but for the demonstration here I'm only going to do 12. As long as you have a multiple of three um, a multiple of three chains your project will work just fine. So again this is for someone who knows basic crochet so I'm not going to go through the basic crochet steps quite um, I'm not going to do a slower demonstration of that, but I've provided links if you do want to go back and refresh um, on some of the, the stitches that we do. And again, it's very, very simple. So you start off by just making a slip knot, insert, and we're going to make a chain. Now again, for this demonstration, I'm just making 12 chains. Um, and so to make a chain, just like that, that counts as one chain, two, three, four, five, seven, nine, 11, and 12. Okay, so I've made 12 chains and you can you can count them if you lay it down like this. Um, let me see if I can find something to, to point, um, maybe this pen. And so you can see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and this last one that I just made counts as 12, right? So we've got 12 chains. And now you're gonna skip three chains. So I'm gonna skip this very first chain that I made here, second chain and the third chain. And you're gonna make a double crochet in that in the next chain over. So to make a double crochet, one loop, put this through, over, all right? Then once more through the first two loops, and then once more through the last two loops. And so we've made a double crochet, all right? Now you're going to make a double crochet through each one of the remaining chains. So again, loop the yarn over, and I'm just going through the top loop of that chain. So you can see the chain over here. You've got a bottom loop and a top loop. I'm essentially just going through this top loop to make that double crochet. Right. Okay. 
And so keep doing that all the way to the end. Second last stitch right here, or second last chain. And this here is my last chain, as you can see. So I'm gonna make sure I do one there. And just for this very first row, you're gonna do one more double crochet in that, in that chain, okay? So I'm gonna do one more, and it's just for this first, this first sort of setup row. All right, and now you're gonna make, you're gonna chain two. We call this, these are turning chains, um, so that when we actually turn the work and, and do that, we have a little bit of give right here. So I'm gonna make those two chains and then I'm gonna turn my work. And I just, I just turn my work like this, okay? And now starts the fun part. Um, so you'll notice that if I exclude this first double crochet that I've done over here, I have nine double crochets. So let me use actually this thing so I can point a little bit better. And you can see it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine double crochets. And then I have this little, this little turning chain thing over here for those ones that we, that we, um, the, the, the things that we skipped, those chains that we skipped at the start when we made this row, right? So we have nine. This is why we need the, the multiple of three. Now comes the fun part. We're actually gonna make double crochets, but we're gonna skip this first one. We're gonna skip this first double crochet, and we're gonna make double crochets um, around the, the, the front of the, or rather in front of the post. So each one of these double crochets, consider them, it's like a post, like a little stick right there. So to, to make a, a, a double crochet around the front of the post, you're gonna take your yarn around the, the hook like this, and you're gonna take your hook. You'll notice that around the post, on either side, there's a hole, right? So you're gonna take your hook from the back side, insert it through the hole that's on the right of that post, insert it back into the hole that's on the left of the post. And so on the back side, it's gonna look like that. It's like as if you've taken your, your hook and you've just kind of put it under that, that post, right? And then you're gonna hook it and pull it through. And now you're set up for a double crochet. So you're gonna do the double crochet. So pull it through the first two ones. Oop, just the first through and then once more. All right. And now you've made a double crochet through the front of the post. You're gonna do that for two more stitches. All right, so we'll see that a couple more times. Loop the yarn insert it through from the back to the front and then in the other hole like that and pull the yarn through and do the double crochet. So that's number two. We do it one more time. And it might be a little bit slow. Oh, let me do that one more once more. Didn't quite catch that. It might be a little bit slower when you when you first get going, but afterwards it'll get fast. And you'll you'll see here what happens. What what ends up happening is your double crochets actually fall behind this first row, as you can see here, and you get this nice ridge, right? Now the next three we're gonna do uh, from the back of the post. So we made these double crochets through the front of the post here. For these ones, we're gonna make them through the back. So to do that, loop the yarn around. And this time, remember how we were kind of going from the back? This time, we're gonna bring the, the um, hook to the front and we're gonna actually insert from the front to the back in the right side hole and then bring it back out. So now we've kind of gone to the back of the post, right? We've gone through the back of the post. And the yarn is right here. You're gonna loop it around. And you set up for your double crochet. You can do the double crochet. And so you did that for one stitch, you can do that for the next two posts, same thing. Yarn over from the front to the back and loop it and double crochet. And once more. Okay, 
And so that is your pattern repeat for that first row. After you've done the first setup row, it's your pattern repeat. You're gonna do three posts from the front, do double crochets on three posts from the front of the post, and then double crochets on three posts from the back of the post. And you're gonna keep repeating that until you get to the last three posts, right? Not counting this little turning chain, the last three posts. The last three posts, you're again gonna do three from the front. So again, this time yarn goes, or the hoop, hook goes through the back and you're, you're making your double crochet through the front of the post. And we'll see that a couple more times. And once more. Oh. I find that doing that front of the post is a little bit more trickier than doing the back of the post doing it through the back of the post. Oh, I don't think I hooked it quite right. And this yarn does tend to split a little bit, the plies in here, so you just have to watch it a, a, a little more carefully whenever you've split the yarn. All right, okay. So you can see here, I did three front of the post, three back of the post, now three front of the post. The last thing you wanna do here before you turn is you now wanna make another double crochet in this turning chain. So. Here you can see the turning chain. We've got one, two, three chains. I'm, I'm just gonna do a double crochet. I'm gonna insert it through this, the top of this turning chain. It doesn't matter if you insert it through one loop or two loops of the top of the turning chain. Um, it really doesn't matter, whichever works best for you. And do a double crochet on the top of that, okay? So right here. So that's gonna count as our extra double crochet that we have there. Now we do a turning chain again, so two chains for the turning chain, and you turn the work. Now this row, this first row, after the setup row, the first row that we've, repeat, we've done, we're gonna repeat that row here, okay? So now watch carefully. We're again gonna do three in the front of the post. So you can, you can see your post right here, these three. I'm gonna do that, and front of the post. So remember, you're taking the yarn to, from the back, and or the, the hook from the back and going through the front of the post. And you do a double crochet. And you do that two more times for the other two, for the other two posts. So this part here, trying to pull it through and come out from the front of the post, that can be a little bit tricky when you first start. But once you practice it a little bit, it, it gets fairly smooth. Okay. And now from the back of the post. So now you'll notice that the posts are fairly hidden, right? If I, if I do this, if I bring this ridge down, you'll see that the three posts are actually right there, right? So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna go like this and through the back of the post. Oh. Let me try that one more time. Okay. And when you do a double crochet through the back of the post, you'll notice that your, your stitch actually forms in the front. Okay. And you can see here, the post is actually formed in the front of this ridge. Let me do that one more time. So remember, we're re just repeating that same row one again. So we'll keep doing this till you get to the last three posts and you can see the last three posts are right here. And those last three we're gonna do from the front of the post. So round from the, from the back. And here again, it gets a little bit tricky. You just have to tease it out a little bit from the back to the front. Okay. And two more times. And once more. All right, and now again, before we turn, we're gonna do another double crochet at the top of this turning chain. So right here, you can see I have my turning chain. I'm just gonna insert it 
Again, doesn't matter if you insert it through one loop or two loops. If this is a little bit hard for you, you could actually just insert it into this hole right here and make your double crochet right there. Um, that's fine too, but I think it looks a little bit better if you actually insert it through a chain. And so I'm gonna try it. My hook is a little bit big and I tend to knit my, or crochet my chains a little bit uh, tighter. And so that uh, crocheting a looser chain may make this step a little bit easier. But I'm going to find it and insert my hook right through there. And that should work. All right. And so there, I've made that extra double crochet. So row one, row two, it's the same. Then you make your two turning chains and turn your work. Now you do the exact opposite of row one and row two. Now you, for the first three, you're gonna do to the back of the post and then the next three to the front of the post and so on, all right? So now we're doing the first three from to the back of the post. So you're gonna take your hook and insert it from the front to the back of the post and make your double crochet. Okay, once more for the second, second post and once more for the third post. All right. And for the next three, we're going to do them fr from the front of the post. So again, if I pull this ridge down, you'll see that the posts are actually right there. There's those three posts, right? So we're going to do them from the front of the post, which means we're going to take our, knee, our, our hook, insert it from the back to the front, pull the yarn through, and then double crochet. Do that two more times for the remaining two posts there. And once more. Okay. And you'll keep doing that till the last three posts. And the last three posts we're going to do from the back of the post. And then we do one double crochet on this turning chain right here. Oh, I didn't think I did a good job on the previous one. Oh well. I'm gonna stick this in. Oh, you know what, I'm just gonna put it in the hole right now. Just for the sake of demonstration, I don't think it matters. I think at the end of the day, it'll still look, it'll still look okay. All right, that's rows one and rows two done, as well as now row three. So now you do your two turn, turning chains. Remember, do not forget your turning chains. And if you're hearing scratching sounds, those are my little kittens, no longer kittens, now they're teens. And they wanna come into my, my studio here. Okay, so that's it, that's row three. Row four, same exact thing as row three. So we're gonna do three, starting three to the back, three to the front. So we're gonna go in here, insert like so. And now we're going on the back of the post and we do three to the back. Of the post okay and three to the front of the post so you'll actually go from the back to the front like that just like we did before and so on. So once you finish row four, I'm not gonna complete it here in the interest of time, but once you finish row four, you do your, you know, the last double crochet, two turning chains, and these are the four rows that you'll keep repeating. So rows one and rows, row, rows one and two are the same, and rows three and four are the same. And once you keep doing that, your work is gonna start looking like this, All right? And so by, by Putting these um, double crochets either to the front of the post or the back of the post is how we create these, these vertical posts and these ridges and allow these guys to kind of stand out and, and, and you get that basket weave effect. So I do hope you give this, this stitch a try. Um, as I said, I think if you know basic crochet, 
um, how to do double crochets, you're comfortable with that, I think you could try this one. I know it seems a little bit, may seem a little bit complicated at the start, um, going through the back of the post, front of the post, but if you just practice a little bit, I promise you it's really not that difficult. I don't consider myself a great crocheter, as, as you can see, I sometimes struggle uh, with crochet, but I think um, it's it's good to, you know, learn new stitches and try new stitches. So I'm trying, I'm trying with crochet, and once I once I learn new stitches, I, I, I you know, definitely want to share them with you and I hope you give this one a try. As, as always, if you have any questions, um, leave me a comment. Oh, oh, I forgot. So you'll keep doing this until your work measures your to the, the distance that you want or the height that you want. So these ones here are seven by seven, so about seven inches. And you know, you can stop after row one or row two. Um, typically, I, I've stopped after a repeat of rows one and two, and then I think I've stopped there. Yeah, I'll just I'll just kind of keep going till I know it's gonna form a nice little square. If you wanted, if you're making a towel or something and you want a rectangle, you can keep going, and just stop at where um you know the 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 length it ends, and then that's it with crochet. You'll just you'll just end like that. I'm just gonna assume that this is this is the end right here. Um, once it's done, I almost forgot. I, I, I put a loop at the end, so I just made a chain of about twelve chains. You can do about twelve or fourteen chains. And then um, I'm just gonna stop right here. And then you bring them back to the, the base of the chain right there and just pull the yarn through. And I tend to pull it through one more time. Okay, and that's it. And then you'll, sn you'll um, snip your yarn here and you'll weave in your tail ends. You can use your, your crochet hook to sort of, you know, weave in the, the ends. And the one thing I like to do at the end with these yarns is because they're four ply, you can split them up. And if it's a cotton yarn, then you can just tie a, a knot with those two plies. Really tight, but not quite not quite to the point of breaking. Do it once more. Get really tight. And then you can you can use your scissors and just snip that very close. And it's not gonna go anywhere. So and these will be machine washable and um I think they'll be they'll be of great utility. So, as always, thank you so much for watching my channel, for supporting my channel. Love to read your comments. Um, I'll do my best to answer them. Sometimes I may not be as quick if I'm traveling or if I'm busy, but I will. I'll do my best to answer your questions, and I hope to come up with more um, knitting and more crochet videos in the future. So, thanks for watching, and in this case, happy crocheting.